today I'm going to show you how to drop into your butterfly without sitting back in your hips. It's definitely one of the most common questions that you ask me about. You say, when I drop into my butterfly, I sit back in my hips, or my coach tells me I sit back in my hips. And then you usually ask for some strength exercises to help with that, or some core stability exercises to help with that. By the end of today's video, you're gonna understand exactly why you do that. I'm gonna help you uh, sort of minimize the amount that you do that, and uh, we'll We'll clean that up, shall we say. This is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I am an exercise physiologist. I specialize in off-ice training for hockey goalies. Let's go. So let's first make sure we're crystal clear what we're talking about. What I mean when sit back in your hips is that some of you, when you drop into your butterfly, you end up back here. So your butt's kind of sitting close to your heels. If I had a stripe on my pants, that stripe would be kind of aiming backwards a little bit. And what your goalie coach wants you to do is stay tall in your hips as you drop down so that again if I had a stripe on my pants it would be a little more perpendicular to the ice. Well why is it a bad thing when we sit back in our hips? Because it kind of seems natural to want to do that so why is it a bad thing to do and what are we going to do about it? So to answer the first part of that question when I sit back in my hips look at how much smaller I am in the net and that camera is a bit off the ice level so probably be even more pronounced if it was down at ice level but when I'm sitting back in my hips kind of look at where I am in terms of the net when I come up tall in my hips you can see that I'm sort of taking away more of the net so that's one of the big benefits the other benefit too is the closer I can get myself to the puck even more I cut down you know that angle so if I can even come out you know towards like here when I'm exaggerating I'm I'm really back away from you here as I come closer to the camera you can see less net behind me so it lets me get closer to the puck when, you know when I'm tall in my hips rather than when I'm kind of sitting back here so that's probably why your goalie coaches don't like it I don't like it because when I'm sitting back in my hips I'm in more hip flexion so you know this this is a uh, sort of a neutral hip flexion and here is increased hip flexion when I flex I only have so much flexion available I only have so much room in the front of my hip to do hip flexion so when I'm sitting back in my hips I close down the front of my hip a little bit I have less space available to me so then I have less room to kind of recover my skate underneath me if I want to push somewhere. When I'm taller in my hips and projecting my body towards the puck, I've got way more space in the front of my hips. So I think it does make you move more efficiently, but it also probably reduces a little bit of wear and tear on the front surface of that hip joint. So we've seen why it isn't a great idea, both from a positioning perspective and from a wear and tear perspective or a movement perspective uh, on our hip joints. So why the heck do, do we kind of all seem to do it? And does that seem to be kind of our natural default? Let's think, let's picture that we're gonna do a box drop. So I set you up on a, 20 inch box or whatever I'm gonna say you're gonna jump off the box and land none of us are going to land and I'll show you when I go back to the gym but none of us are gonna land you know stiff-legged we're all gonna to want to absorb a little bit and this is the same type of thing just on the ice so it's natural to want to absorb with hips and knees a little bit absorb some of that force so let's head back into the gym for a second I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, I'll show you some strategies you can use off the ice to help you learn to minimize that or how to rebound from that so you're in a nice tall position and then we'll come back out here and we'll talk about some strategies on the ice because you might also notice too maybe you're getting good at get dropping into your butterfly staying tall in your hips but then when the play gets going and you know you're moving then you find that you're sitting down again and I'll explain a little bit more detail too why you also do that
it's not productive, if it's costing us goals and gains, why the heck do we do it? The answer is, uh, really comes down to simple biomechanics. I'll show you exactly what I mean, why exactly we do it, where the benefit of doing it is, uh, but how to do it in the right way so that it's not costing you goals and gains. How's that sound? If I told you that I was going to step off this 20 inch plyo box and land on the ground with just st stiff legs, so I, I was, I was going to keep my knees, my hips straight and just land boom, just like that. Intuitively, you would be thinking, ah, I think that's a bad idea. So, you know, why is it a bad idea? Well, because you need to absorb that force. If I just landed, Kong, you know, straight legged, all that force would go to my ankles, to my knees, to my hips, to my back. And it's just adding so much wear and tear and potentially you're going to hurt yourself over time. So when we land a plyo box drop, we absorb with our hips, knees, and ankles. And we actually even practice how to do that. We teach athletes, one of the first things we teach athletes when we're talking about power is how to absorb that force, how to land properly. So we teach them to boom, really quickly absorb that force and then be ready for the next movement. So when you are dropping into your butterfly and your hips sit back a little bit, that's not a bad thing. That's dissipating the force. Uh, if you just went straight down, boom, then all that force is going to go on your hips and your low back. And over time, it's going to add wear and tear. And just like if we drop stiff legged off the plyo box, so you would never do that because you know that over time, that's going to, that's going to lead to an injury. So we need to do it, but then we need to learn to boom, come back out of it, make ourselves big, make ourselves ready for the next save so that we're taking away all the stuff that we talked about back when I was on the ice. Before I give you the exercises, there's one more reason why we want to sit back like we got a wet diaper <laughs> when we're on the ice. And let's, let's think of this. Imagine that you're just cruising down the sidewalk, loving life, and all of a sudden there is a big earthquake and you're shaking and grooving and the ground's moving underneath you. What's the first thing you do? And you didn't have to learn it. You didn't have to train it. Instinctively, you're going to drop down. You're going to get a little bit lower. You're going to get your center of mass closer to the ground because you're more balanced that way. Or, you know, if you see somebody's, you're walking on the sidewalk and then it's really icy, you know, you bend your knees a little more and you're, you're getting better balance that way. So that's another reason we sit back in our hips as we're moving on the ice because we feel more balanced. We feel more comfortable. That's one that we can change with training as well. So if we get more comfortable, if you, if you see somebody who's like always walking on an icy sidewalk, they're not quite as cautious, you know, they may be a little more careful, but they don't have to slow down as much. So these drills, two things going to teach you to absorb and reset, and then going to teach you to have really nice balance in that tall hip position so that you feel more comfortable. You don't have to get so close to the ground. When you talk to me about this issue, you usually ask for either leg strength exercises or core strength exercises to correct this problem. But if we think about it from uh, an exercise physiology perspective, it's not a strength issue. Like none of us is so weak that we can't hold ourselves in this position and so then we have to default to this position you know this is just kind of like a standing position from our knees it's not it's not muscularly demanding it's a habit so we're going to train that habit or try to retrain that habit so i have a green super band uh, just just below my hip bones i have an air x pad here that gives me about two inches um rise so almost you know trying to mimic my knee stacks and i'm going to go down into my butterfly and practice you know not i'm not going to sink way way down i'm going to absorb but then also get my hips up nice and tall this is kind of a, this is definitely a cheater because also what it does is it lets you get that feeling of being tall in your hips but projecting your torso out over the puck um, so you're not kind of here you can get here and then project yourself over top not not even being kind of straight up and down because that from where the puck is what the puck sees it actually makes you a little smaller in the net if you can project yourself closer to the puck it, it makes the net effectively smaller behind you so really we're just working that pattern getting used to boom and then 
getting those hips up, making sure that we can, we can absorb okay, but that we're practicing getting those hips up tall. We're not gonna, you know, do like a hundred of these a day. We're gonna just practice that pattern, get a feel for what it feels like, get a little reminder that, yeah, I'm gonna absorb what I need to, but then project those hips forward. Using the super band, so I really want you to use a super band because it takes, it deloads that movement. So you're not, you know, you're not smashing into your butterfly. You're not adding to the wear and tear on your hips, knees, and ankles. I think if you're using a super band and air X pad, it would be fine to use deliberate practice. Maybe do like 20 repetitions like this. Not as conditioning, not as speed work, but just as that deliberate practice to absorb and then make sure I'm resetting to get my hips nice and tall. From there, I just move on to some shadow saves. So looking at kind of moving from my knees, I could pull out my slide board and do this work on my slide board as well, but just adding some random patterns, you know, and making sure that as I move, that I'm keeping those hips nice and tall, thinking about where the puck might be, uh, and, and just watching as I go through it, am I kind of getting into my old habit of sitting back in my hips? Am I staying tall and projecting myself out over the puck? That feels kind of funny. You get to a point where it's like, well, I'm going to tip over forward. So that's just what I'm practicing as I go in just small movements. I can wear my knee pads when I do this, not smashing into my butterfly, just practicing those patterns and going for about 30 seconds. Per set. This last exercise ties in the balance element of it and I just call it an alternate uh, RVH balance. So you're going to try to stay tall in your hips, project your body a little bit forward and then it's almost like, and don't worry too much about the hip internal rotation. You can give it a little bit but don't, don't worry about like trying to maximize your, your flair on this. But I'm just going to get here, boom, over that and try to hold my balance. So bring this other leg off the floor. I don't need to kick it way up in the air. I just want to bring it off the floor and then get here and get balanced holding that. Switch sides, kind of switch quickly and watch as you go through, do you sort of get lower and lower? Like look how easy it is for me to balance when I'm sitting back in my, you know, with my wet diaper. But if I got the nice clean diaper on, it's a little harder for me to balance up there because the levers are longer. It takes a little more to keep me balanced. For that one, I would do sort of 10 on each side, trying to hold for three seconds, building up to holding for five seconds. It's not a smashing into one another. It's just, you know, transitioning from here transitioning to there. Make sure you're thinking, hey, where should my hands be? If you get balanced like like this, oh, I'm balanced. Well, that's not really a position we want to use to make a save. So you can, it's okay to sort of get there, but then boom, it's like, okay, now I want to try to get, you know, back up over those hips, get my shoulders square to what's going on. So it starts making some sense when we start putting all those pieces together. You can see, you know, why it's not ideal to to do that. You can see why your body naturally wants to do that uh, and some things that you can work on off the ice to help minimize that. Then when we get on the ice, let's think about, yeah, like maybe we are getting really good at staying tall in our hips when we go into our butterfly, but as plays get scrambly, we get back in our little, you know, sitting back, balanced, safe, compact position. So what can we do to practice that on the ice? Well, at the start of practice, just practice going into your butterfly and then, you know, staying or getting tall in your hips. Then what you can work on is just same idea. So in your butterfly, a push and a stop, and then check your position. Did I sit back or am I staying tall? So we start with a pretty basic pattern. Drop in your butterfly, push, stop, check your position. Then we just keep adding little layers of complexity. So I could drop into my butterfly, push back to my post, push to my other post and check my position. It's a great idea too, if you have a GoPro or anything, you can set it up and watch and see what's my hip position. Set it up from side view just to see, you know, do I do that? If you have game film, look and see as the game goes on, do I sit back more and more in my hips? But let's go through that drill. So it's going to be, it's going to be a butterfly, push to that post, push across to the other post. 
and then checking your position each time. Am I staying nice and tall in the net? Didn't put the pegs in. You know, then I like to just practice sort of bang, bang plays. Like, so I visualize, okay, maybe the puck getting passed out. Now I'm in the butterfly, make a save, second save. I'll put together a little kind of random combination and check my position each time when I get to the end of that sequence. So just like any other time we're trying to fine tune technique, it's all about deliberate practice. So you need to really pay attention, deliberately practice that skill before it gets to be second nature. That's the only path to get there. So do watch that game film of yourself. Be aware of what you're doing. Sometimes you don't feel like you're sitting back, but when you watch the video, it's like, oh geez, yeah, there I go. I, I was doing it. If you want to make more saves from your butterfly, head over to your app store, download the butterfly challenge. It's free. Don't ask questions, just do it. <laughs> uh, let me know if your coach has ever said that you're sitting back in your hips and told you stop doing that. Uh, maybe share some of the techniques or the tips that you use to break that habit, because uh, we'd love to see them. So just plop those in the comments below if you haven't done so already. Please subscribe, it helps me out a ton, it helps me help you. Uh, so subscribe, if you're already subscribed, hit the bell so you know about uh, new videos as soon as they go up. And as always, Give a girl a like, would you? Uh, this is Maria from GoalieTradingPro.com. I will get you next time. Oh yeah, and if you missed the video I did with Michael Lawrence where we talked about stance and he walks us through sort of how he and Elvis Mears Lickens have um, tweaked his stance a little bit and we talk, some of it we talk is this exact same thing, uh, then make sure you check that out. I'll put a link in the description for you, but that is a must see. I snuck it up on a Sunday, so you might've missed it unless you'd hit the bell. If you'd hit the bell, you'd know all about it. Yeah, I got a big cold sore right on my face. It's supposed to be on your lip, but apparently it's 2020, so it's like, no, I'm just gonna right on the middle of your face. Sorry about that. I know it's disgusting. Not much I can do about it.